Purging is not fun. It's not comfortable. But it has to be done. We cannot advance in this life if we're being, if we're accumulating and acquiring all these things along the way and never releasing anything else. If you're not conscious about your investment strategy, you won't end up where you want to be, not financially or as a human. On this show, we interview highly successful investors and share how they overcame limitations to become unstoppable forces of success. If you're ready to learn what it is to be a conscious investor so you can end up where you want, keep listening. Hey, conscious investor, are you living the cafeteria level life? Are you too busy trying to do everything that life is mediocre? Because let's face it, cafeteria food is mediocre. Yes, Ikea, I am straight up calling you out. Your Swedish meatballs, they could be better. Is cafeteria food, okay? And so we don't want to live a cafeteria life. I'm going to dive into this and it might be a little bit uncomfortable for you conscious investor, but I assure you of this, it will create some movement in your life as you are willing to evaluate and dive in and explore this possibility that you might have a bunch of half-built bridges in your life that are leading to nowhere that are bankrupting your life. Before we dive in, Conscious Investor, I want to let you know, this is a movement. And I've become bolder about saying the Conscious Investor is a movement. Yes, I. it's about investing in real estate. And yes, it's a million percent more about personal freedom. Because personal freedom includes financial freedom. And financial freedom includes really strong investments. Like you can't have financial freedom without having great investments. <laughs> but you know what? Most people are living in a cage. That's why my investment company, Three Keys Investments, that's why there's a bird on top of a cage with the door open. Because nobody should be living a life in a cage. We were not created and designed to be caged. We are created and designed to live, to lead, and to live lives of great contribution to our family, our friends, our community, and the world at large. Conscious Investor, this is a movement. Let's let let's get this movement going global. Let's let this reach every pocket of the world because guess what? Money is just a piece of paper. If you've noticed on social media, I, you know, actually burned a dollar bill. Like it's a piece of paper that we assigned so much value and meaning to. Going back to our previous um, mindset episode from last week, we generate a story around money (laughs) and it ends up derailing a lot of people's greater contribution in their life. Regardless of where we live, we can, every single human can experience personal freedom. I am a firm believer in that. So conscious investor, I would be absolutely honored. And I can't, this isn't a solo, this isn't a solo thing. This is about linking arms and it's grassroots, which is really cool. <laughs> and it cannot be accomplished and achieved. Getting this message out cannot happen without us working together. So if you feel aligned with that, supporting other people in reaching and achieving personal freedom in their life, you want to see people live lives of meaning and contribution, please make sure that you share the podcast episode. Please, if you haven't already, leave a a rating and review so that we trip that algorithm, okay? Because all these things do matter and they're free and they are such small ways to be able to be part of something much larger than yourself. And that's what I love. I love that, you know, doing great things doesn't mean that we have to be these superhero type people. Greatness is accomplished in the smallest pockets of life. So I want to thank you in advance, those of you who are linking on um, Conscious Investors. Thank you so much. Okay, let's just talk about this whole cafeteria style life. Because goodness, I remember, and you know, you might recall Sizzler. There's another uh, Golden Corral. I never went there. Now we have Brazilian barbecues, right? I've been to one. I just can't. I can't eat enough food to warrant going to places like that. Um, however, 
those of you who are Gen Xers, right, who grew up and Sizzler was a thing and gosh darn that cheese toast. Okay, that's legit. Okay, I, I will make that cheese toast even at home. But, you know, I remember as a kid going to Sizzler and it felt like this. Oh, this is so amazing. Look at all this food. And, you know, growing up in a family of six, it, it, you know, it's like having three older brothers that, you know, tend to eat a lot as teenage guys do. It's such a treat to go to Sizzler and to be able to have this menagerie of food. You know, you had your jello and you had like the whipped cream and the salad bar that you could create anything and everything. And you could get the add-on with the shrimp so that, you know, you could have that all-you-can-eat popcorn shrimp. And you could, so much was available. But the quality, not high quality, right? I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it definitely filled in the gaps. It wasn't the highest quality. Sometimes I think we need to look at our lives and say, are we living a cafeteria style life, cafeteria level life? Or are we a fine dining, you know, Michelin rated restaurant experience? One of the things I love in Conscious Investor, you know, I love food and I love really good food and I don't have a huge appetite. And so I would rather pay more and have something super high quality and have less of it, but just savor every single bite of it. But oftentimes we have um, a scarcity mindset that we have grown up with that we haven't accounted for in all parts of our life. And it sabotages so much of what we're trying to accomplish in life. And this, this um, scarcity mindset, it just creeps in and it keeps us at that cafeteria level food. It's good enough. And a too often, we're settling for good enough in our personal lives in our investing, in our marriage, in our friendships. We could go down the line, All we could go on, right? I think you're tracking with me. Conscious investor, we don't want to anticipate and be say, oh, mediocre is acceptable for me. That's not living life. And that's not personal freedom. Personal freedom isn't like, Oh, yay. I'm so glad. Yay for this jello bite, right? That's not personal freedom. Let me see how this lands for you. And a and, and little opportunity for you with this, right? To evaluate. Are the kids in every single extracurricular activity possible? Are you running one kid around? Because if you have a bunch of kids, they could be in different activities and that's going to require some running around if you have a, a larger family. I get that. Um, but does one kid have like all these activities every single night that are keeping them away? Is that really going to develop them the way they need to be in the world? I have strong feelings on that. By the way, conscious rest, right? I mean, like kids all... The, yeah, that family time, it is so short. It is so such a sweet little window in life. And there's a balance in all of that. Maybe you just have a bunch of knee-deep friendships. Maybe your marriage is just like, yeah, we have a date night once a week. Check. Got it. Date night. But there's no meaningful conversation. There's no meaningful connection. It's just cafeteria level. Maybe you have a bunch of side hustles. You're trying to get ahead. You're trying to save for that first investment opportunity. And you're going to have all these side hustles. But it's depleting every other part of your life. You live in a cafeteria level life. Maybe you're just everywhere but nowhere. And you have nothing to show for it. A lot of people are thriving on this concept of being productive. I know that we've exited, largely exited from the hustle culture, but there's still this, uh, it maybe is just replaced by this productivity obsession, especially high performers. What do we actually have to show for it? Yay, you got all your TPS reports done. 
right? Like, great, but your kid's asking for your attention. Your spouse just wants to sit with a glass of wine and have a conversation that's of substance and meaning and value. Your friend is hurting, but you're oblivious to it. See, our, our cafeteria style life has a consequence to it. And we don't want to have a bunch of half-built bridges in our life. So, as always... I don't want to stay here. We don't want to stay in this zone. We want to level up. We want to be that five-star restaurant experience. We don't want to be that cafeteria level because we know that's mediocre and it's enough to, to satisfy, but it's not what's going to create longevity. It's not going to be what's going to sustain us for the entire journey. So here are four things that we need to do to transition out of cafeteria level life and into that five-star restaurant. First of all, we got to get quiet. I found myself personally longing. Like, you know, conscious investor, all of this content isn't just about trying to get it out to the world. These are things I face in my life. These are real challenges that I face. I'm bringing these examples because I've been doing some soul searching. I've been doing that deep work, digging into those areas. Am I really, am I being cafeteria level? Reflecting on that, but that requires that we allow ourselves time and space to get quiet, get still, listen. Don't be afraid to evaluate these areas. And once we're quiet, now we got we we can get clear. Whoa, I have to do this maybe definitely every quarter at least. Now that I, you know, set my week, my schedule for the week on the, on the weekend, maybe Friday, Saturday or Sunday, one of those days, I'll I set time aside. I get quiet. I look at where my energy is going for the next week and ensure that it aligns. I'm clear about where that energy is going and how it aligns. And that has led to some painful purging. Okay. So purging is our third step. We got to start looking at these activities and, and where we're pouring our time, energy, talent, money, all of our resources. Is this aligned with my greater vision, mission, purpose, contribution in life? If it's not aligned, even if we, if, well, I won't go there, but I will say if it's not aligned, it's time to purge it. And I did consider using spring cleaning as an example, but honestly, I think we need to hear it in a more severe way. Purging is not fun. It's not comfortable, but it has to be done. We cannot advance in this life if we're being, if we're accumulating and acquiring all these things along the way and never releasing anything else. Let me go into that just a little bit more. I wasn't planning on this, but, but I, I just, you know, one of the thoughts that I've had over the years, one of the things that I've noticed, particularly since I've lived on my own, is that somehow, even if I, I go through and I purge my entire house. You purge the closets, you purge, you know, the pantry, the refrigerator, you know, the cupboards where you end up storing things, the garage. Within a year, all of a sudden, you've acquired and accumulated all this stuff. And this is, I believe, a first world situation. So I don't think that this is something that is a global situation. Definitely a first world situation where stuff, like we're just like these magnets for stuff. You open your mailbox and you've got stuff. I didn't even ask for this, but I've got it there, you know, and that's not a big deal. I can take care of it, but it's one more thing we have to do. We have generous and kind friends who think of us and like, oh, here, this is for you. And it's so heartwarming. And then you're like, okay, and we find a home for it. But then do we release something else so that we can receive that? By the way, release and receive is definitely a concept we spoke about a lot on Mindset episodes last year. All this to say is that we cannot 
if we're these magnets that are attracting stuff into our life, we're attracting people into our lives, we're attracting opportunities into our lives. All of these things are coming into our lives. That's not a bad thing, but it requires that we are clear about what we are keeping in our lives, about what we are holding on to. Because if we choose to try to hold on to everything, we are going to be carrying around so much that it, it, just think about a backpack. In my mind, I, I'm thinking, you know, back when, you know, Steve and I used to do back, like backpacking together, you know, it's like, you don't want to overweight your pack because you can't continue on the journey in a comfortable way. Your knees will get sore. Your ankles will get sore. Your, you might get raw feet. You know, it's just your shoulders, your waist, everything is not going to be comfortable. So we have to do that purging process. Maybe it looks like reevaluating the family's extracurricular schedule. Oh, it'd be wonderful to make it to every single barbecue and every single get together with friends. But wow, we really need some quiet time. We're all feeling a little ragged. We need to make sure that we set some time aside so that we can be still and quiet and just have that calmness. That might be something that you end up choosing to do on your own, right? So we go into the different parts of our life and we say like, is there anything here that we need to release so that we can stay on this journey, that we can receive the things that God has beautifully planned to provide into our lives. And then once we've done that purge, this is where the fun really comes in. Now we can pour all of that freedom that we have. It just goes into that now open space. Now I'm not saying, okay, well, you just got rid of a bunch of stuff and you're going to fill it. No, think about it like this. And let me think, I, I, I didn't think in advance of this analogy. So bear with me, conscious investor. But Gen Xers, you probably remember those little capsules that we would get when we were kids and you'd put them into water, warm water. And the capsule part would dissolve. And then there would be a sponge or this little, and usually it was in the shape of an animal or something. They still make them. I don't see them around quite as frequently, but they were definitely like super cool. When, I don't know, we're eight, nine, ten. All that to say, think about it like this. Your contribution, what you were uniquely created and hardwired to, to contribute into the world in your lifetime is in this little capsule. And that contribution needs to get put it needs an activator. But when we have all this stuff in our lives, all these additional responsibilities, all these different pulls in our lives, can that little capsule of contribution actually have a place to be activated? It's being that water is being shared with way too many other things. It's cooling off way too fast. But when we clear out that space, we provide more space for our contribution to get activated. And over time, and not necessarily a time is a very relative term. We've talked about that before. But in some period of time, that contribution is going to have that, that capsule part will you know, disintegrate, it will dissolve, and your contribution will be able to grow into the fullness it's intended to. It can't grow into the fullness it's intended to when it's being cramped. Because even, let's say, some of you are like, oh yeah, I, I've definitely felt that in my life that I've cleared, I've done that. I, Julie, I've gotten quiet, I've gotten clear, I have purged before, and I have activated my contribution. But then guess what? Maybe all of that stuff where magnets just comes into our lives and starts squishing on that foamy part of our contribution. And now our contribution is getting suffocated. The space that it needs to continue to expand and grow is now being invaded by other things. This is why it's so critical that we are taking time to go through this process on a regular basis. 
I highly recommend doing this at least at the very least quarterly, but I am finding it so valuable to look at my entire, well, I like to look at the month. I like to look at the week. Um, and But doing this weekly really allows me to see where is my time going? Is it being invaded by other things? So we get quiet, we get clear, we purge the excess, and then we pour into, we allow space for everything that is aligned with us to completely expand. No more half-built bridges. <laughs> so we'll get the satisfaction of completion, that fulfillment of living into something that we were genuinely created to contribute to the world. Conscious Investor, I care about you and I thank you so much for taking time to listen to this in its fullness. Will you please take a moment help spread the word of conscious investors. Remember, we're not just obsessed about great real estate investments. We're obsessed and consumed with personal freedom. We want creativity in our lives. We want the freedom for the relationships in our lives, the freedom for our um, use of our time, our talents, our energy, our money. That's all encapsulated with our personal freedom. If we haven't spoken yet, conscious investor, what are you waiting for? That If you're watching on YouTube, you see, I'm like, I just light up. I'm like, that genuinely is the highlight of any day that I get to talk with you, Conscious Investor. So please make sure you, you know, pop down. There will be a link. You can schedule time on my calendar. Let's talk about what, what are your personal freedom goals? What are your financial goals? How would investing support you? In either case, if I can't support you in taking that next step in your life, I probably know someone who can help you out. So don't be a stranger. Schedule a time today. Until next time, live big, love bigger, and do great things. What's the big deal about investing in apartments? Why is it better than investing in a slew of single family homes? I've compiled a lot of information on why investing in a multifamily, also known as apartments, will help you reach your investment goals. Head over to 3keysinvestments.com and download the Why Invest in Multifamily Guide today.